this time on Graveyard Cars. Mark and Alyssa complete the decals on the Roadrunner convertible, then take a field trip to check out an irreplaceable 1970 Challenger. Why restore the car now? Um, I think it was time. It's a promise I made to her before she passed, and um, it's time. Dave works on the interior of the one-of-a-kind Hemi Roadrunner convertible, and Will jams out on the Tribute Superbird. But with Mark out of the office, Will decides to take off early and indulge his artistic side. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. So today we're getting ready to put some decals on our 69 Roadrunner convertible, 426 Emmy Automatic, Q5C foam, only one in the world like it. Last season, Alyssa helped me with doing some assembly line markings and the finer points of detail, installing labels, installing exterior graphics. That's also the finer points of detail. So I wanted to have her help me and start developing that skill set for her. All of your Roadrunners on the cold air induction are gonna have the Coyote Duster decal in 69. This particular one here is for our 70 Coronet which is a Dodge, and it actually calls out the Hemi. But on the Roadrunner, even with a Hemi in it, cold air induction, N96, you'd have got that. Okay. These are your running birds, these are your standing birds. One of these standing birds goes on the dash. We don't have the dash back from Instrument Specialties yet, and when it does come back, it'll probably be on it. These are the running birds. These are the ones that lead into and go away from the Roadrunner nameplate that you see on the door right here. So I always call Tony D'Agostino uh, back at Tony's Parts because he has survivor cars. He also has OE Gold Class winning restored cars. He's got a six barrel car that's the highest quality restoration in the country. I had him take up close photographs so I know what the exact length and distance and height is relative to the actual car itself. When I looked at Tony's pictures, they were exactly 13 sixteenths of an inch off of the R. Right at the end of my tape measure, put a piece of tape vertically. All right, now we have to transpose this because the bird's gonna go right there. So you'll take another piece of tape. You need that 13 sixteenths mark, right. but yeah. you can't put the bird over that, right? So you wanna take this and put it right up against it and then take that down. So now you know the back of your decal goes right there and that's 13 sixteenths of an inch. Okay. You can double check it. Perfect. Then when I was looking at his photos, the datum plane is exactly in line with this right here. So the bottom of the running bird, the dust trail right here, the bottom of his little dust trail, even though this one dips down a little bit further than that, is parallel with the bottom of that emblem. So rather than guessing, we're gonna put a piece of tape on there. Set it underneath the back of the R, right at the back of the word. Right there, go ahead and nail that down. That looks good right there. See that? Yeah, nice that and looks funny. good. Tack cloth just gets any dust that's underneath there off of it. Application gel. How long will these decals last? What? Some cases they last as long as the cars last. Uh, especially today's vinyl, it's so much better than yesterday's vinyl. But yeah, there's cars out in the graveyard that still have their original decals on them. Okay, I'd have to say that's pretty darn good. This might be a stupid question, but it's weird to me that you wouldn't put the decals on and then do the clear coat over the decals to help protect them. Well, the factory didn't do that. So we can't really do that. Okay, so squeegee starting from the middle out, but the clear coat would protect it, I agree. And that, see, it's right on that tape line, that's right up against that line, that's where you want it. Right now, I think that's plenty. So I'm gonna pull it, fold it down. Ooh, that's that cool? vibrant. That is beautiful. And it, that's on there, you can't really move it around anymore at no, all? No, it's done now. Okay. If you put it on wrong, you're peeling it back off and ordering another one. That's really pretty. Looks good though, doesn't yeah. it? Okay, so that one's good. Let's go put the other side on, then we'll put the deck lid on, and then we'll put all the information labels on. Okay. Hmm. 
ที่นี้Did you teach Will how to put on decals, or did where did he learn how? He doesn't know how. I thought he was going to put the decals on the back half of the Phantom. Yeah, uh, you're talking about the billboards. Call them correctly. Yeah. The billboard stripes. Yes, he is. Yes, yes, he is. So how is that going to work out? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe next time he should think about that before he shoots his mouth off. He always okay. picks my work apart, well, so he's going to learn the hard way on that one, isn't he? Now. It's just like the whole back half of the car, right? Mm, pretty much, yes. I am thinking I'm going to want to use gel on this. I don't want wrinkles in it. I don't want problems. I'm a businessman. I'll just go ahead and put this on real quick. So here, see this crevice, and you see this crevice, right? They're going to be centered right in between them, and he's going to be the middle of his legs is going to be the middle of that lock cylinder. That's how that critter is going to go. I get a little obsessive right here. I'm sorry for that. So that's money right there. Oh, when that, that laser that goes means... off, that means money. Yeah. Okay. Hello, little roadrunner. Hello. It makes me want to be a better roadrunner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Decals, information labels are on uh, our 1969 Roadrunner. Everything went fine. Uh, Alyssa had a great opportunity to to see how easy it is to get something crooked, as well as how difficult it is to get something straight. And I mean, honestly, I do it all the time. I've done decals twice and three times. It's just. If you're not 100% focused, and I'm rarely 100% focused, that's all it takes. Is somebody come by, hey, Mark, yeah, yeah, one second, I just want to finish this. You'll screw it up, because you got to be there. Yeah, it was about time we finished off the air grabber and put the decal on. Decals aren't too hard. It just takes a lot of time and patience, and not rushing through them is what I learned today. On another note, I am worried about Will putting on the decals on the Phantom Cuda. Um, I'd I think, be really worried about it. I think that's going to be a handful for him. I it would, would be too. for anybody. You have a rosary? Especially since he, you know, doesn't have any experience. <laughs> so I'm going to be interested to see how that turns out for him. Me too. Can't wait to see you and Will put the billboard. Hey, I'm not helping Will. I didn't sign up for that. I didn't open up my big mouth. I'm not going to help Will with the decals. Um, he got himself into that mess, so he can get himself but out. But buddy, you're his little pal. You guys have got this little thing going on where you guys are... Where he you guys are me up. Frickin' frack. What does he mean? We, ha we have a buddy he buddy does thing need, going it on. It does take two people to he put those decals on. He sent me out in a space suit the other day to do a, to wash a car. It takes two people to put a decal on correctly. You're going to have to help him because I'm not going. He's going to gonna have to make some friends then because I'm not going to help him either. Uh, no, but you got his back. I've seen some of this stuff that's going on around uh, here talking about no. me behind my back, stabbing me in the back, pulling what we call a Judas. First of all, it's everybody for themselves around here. So I, I'm on no one's team. Hey, Except Judas, for maybe Dave. I'm on Dave's team, actually. Is this your knife? <sighs> I think you left it last time you stabbed me. With the Hemi Roadrunner decals complete, Mark and Alyssa embark on a father-daughter field trip. So today, Alyssa and I are getting ready to drive up north here. It's about an hour. It's a little town called Sio, Oregon. Uh, had a gentleman stop by here the other day. He's got a 70 Challenger that was his wife's. From what I can tell by the two pictures I saw, really a complete solid car. He's looking at having it restored. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to take Alyssa up there with me. She can see what the process is, get to meet the customer in the beginning instead, instead of always after the car's here. So this way she can build a rapport with them at the same time as I do. I'm really excited to go and get to see the car, walk around it, learn what kind of things to look for. I've never gone with my dad and got to see the car on site at the person's house. It's always been kind of torn down in the shop. So I'm excited to go up there and be part of it from the beginning. There he is. Hey, how are you? Well, you said you lived out in the country. I had no idea you meant like another planet country. 
Just a little bit. Good Lord. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. My name is Patrice, and I've got a 70 Challenger uh, RT with a 383 Magnum. It was my wife's car uh, that she's had for a long time, and she passed away about four years ago. And my last promise to her was to get the car restored and back on the road. Got your little bright uh, roadside marker for me. Yes. I saw it from the road down there. Yeah, hard to miss, huh? <laughs> my Hi. daughter, Alyssa. Hi, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, this has kind of been a ride-along for her, kind of like cops do, you know, you get the ride-along. Can't always yeah. do it if it's in another part of the country, yeah. but this is a beautiful drive out here. Oh, I know, it's lovely here. So this was a stagecoach stop. It was the last stop between Eugene and Salem as they, people were going to Eugene. So actually, where you're parked right now is the old stage road, the old county road. Oh, it is? Yes. Right, literally. Right, right literally, right there. So how did it did it make that curve? It and made all that, that curve, went down to the road, and then made a curve again. And this was it. This was it. What was your wife's name? Jeannie. Jeannie. Okay. Like I dream of. I got you. Yeah. Hey, good run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this car meant a lot. Uh, she was a Mopar girl. She uh, got the first seventy Challenger, uh, 344 barrel in high school. Moved moved nicely. She really liked it. Put a big smile on her face. Uh, she ended up totaling it, unfortunately. Um, and then got uh, this one as her second car. It was her daily driver for a couple years. So are you ready to look at the car? I'm ready to look at the All car. Right, let's let's do it. You got it in this one? I got it in this one right here All in right. front of you. So it's a 70 yep. RT with a 383 Magnum. Oh, I love the direct connection plate. Look at that. Oh. What does that mean, Dad? Uh, back in the day, Chrysler's performance line was called direct connection. Today it's called Mopar Performance. That was what everybody who was anybody had. If you had if you had that plate on your car, you were cool. So Jeannie yeah. uh, was cool. She kept the original screws, by the way, that held it in place, which make her even cooler. She came down with cancer uh, late 99 and it progressed. She had a 13 year fight with breast cancer. This is the hood off her original Challenger. Her first car was a 70 uh, with a 344 barrel. And uh, she totaled that one, unfortunately, and, but we were able to salvage a lot of the parts. Yeah. The hood uh, being part of it. First thing we did was take off as many parts as we could. Dash, seats, panels, trim. Why is the hood on the car, though? Because somebody stole the blue hood. Well, of course they did. Course Why they wouldn't did. they? Yeah, That's why right. wouldn't they? Yeah. So she figured, eh, 70 on a 70, it should fit. While Mark and Alyssa check out the Challenger, George and Will are hard at work on the Superbird tribute car. Okay, so right now I'm working on our 1970 Roadrunner, which we are turning into a Superbird. Um, I have the rear quarters in the booth right now with the rear uh, package tray and deck filler. So before he puts those on, it's nice to go on those quarter panels and do all the texture coating because you can actually reach it all before it's put on the car. And once that car is all put together, you really can't get in there and paint that easy. So I paint the whole thing and jam the whole thing apart so that way when he welds it on, I just have to go through and do some touch-ups where he welded. Factory rolled it on. Um, we don't do that, we spray it on. And the only way to get to the edge is to do it with a quarter panel off. So the, I came up with the idea, hey, let's get all the jam work done, the sound deadener done before we put the quarter panel on, and it just makes a more detailed job than before. Even though it's not a factory procedure, Mark approved the new approach to jamming the panels. And despite Will's earlier claims, Mark also claims credit for the idea. This is the first time I've ever sprayed this color. Um, I did the spray out, it covers pretty good, so I'm anxious to see how it comes out. I just got the base coat on, all the parts that need to be cut in. It covers quick, so that's always nice. Uh, the green looks good, and it's ready for clear coat now. We actually are gonna be re uh, restoring another Superbird that's the same color, it's a true car. So we're gonna have two of these cars before too long that are a mirror image of each other. It gets old having to do the same color in a row, so hopefully there's a little bit more of a gap there. Um, but it will be kind of cool to have two identical cars here at the same exact time. We just got it completely clear coated, so I'm running the bake cycle on it right now, so in 30 minutes I can kick it over to George, everything looks great, and he can start assembling them. This means George doesn't have to stand around anymore staring at me through the paint booth. This means as soon as I pull them out of there, he's buried. He's got quarters to put on, tons of parts to do, he's ready to work now. Where I get my measurements for when it comes to doing the sound deadening is we have a bunch of cars out there in the graveyard. So I go out there, we have a true 1970 Superbird already, all original that has not been touched. So I, all I have to do is open the trunk, I see the tape lines where it was let done before, I measure that out, I measure it on these, and I uh, duplicate it just as if it was factory. This will complete the back end completely. It, the nice part is, is that we put it on the jig, so George has already built out the nose, so it's ready for its uh, hood and fenders. Now we can build out the back and then start doing our mud work on it. After completing the jam work and sound deadening on the Tribute Superbird panels, Will decides it's time to reward himself for all his hard work. So I left work early today, 
subscribe the camera crew and we're down here at lifetime tattoos it's been a while since i've gotten a tattoo and i wanted a particular one our recent hire josh our new body man his wife is a tattoo artist down here i'm getting a care bear tattooed uh you'll find out why it's the grumpy care bear it looks cute fluffy as you it should be yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm ready when you are. All right, let me go wash and glove up and we will get started. Why did you decide to get the grumpy bear tattoo done today? You got all this darker stuff on your arm. So my wife and I were looking at my arm a couple weeks ago and it had too much negativity on it. So we wanted to give something a little bit nicer, something that you could look at and laugh at, something kind of silly. I love it. Then my wife went through all the different Care Bears, mm -hmm. and she said Grumpy Bear was a good fit for me, which happens to be the nickname for your husband. Which is just a very great coincidence. Which doesn't make sense, because he's such a sweetheart. Most so, of the time. I've been thinking all the time. While Will gets more and more grumpy, work continues in the shop. If you can get your one clip behind this rod, sure because that's got to stay in there, and then I'll feed that one there in. And then if you could just hold it down, I'll put the cables in, and then we'll see if we can get that bulkhead in. And then shoot, it should be just slam Perfect. dunk after that. So. Yeah. yeah, the dash came in for the 69 Roadrunner Hemi Convertible. Uh, the dash looks fantastic. Uh, they do such a fine job, you know, restoring these dashes. This one's really cool in particular because it has a three speaker dash and it has a really cool uh, AM eight track radio. So that's really cool seeing one of those. I haven't seen one of those since the, the Sunroof Challenger. So it's really unique to this car. So that's really cool. It's really neat to see. Uh, this car has power windows in it, uh, which is really unique to this uh, 69 Roadrunner convertible. So having that dash in can allow me to get all the windows hooked up, get the top hooked up, all the headlights, make sure everything is functioning properly. Now that the dash has passed inspection, Dave and Mike can install it in the one of one Hemi Roadrunner convertible. AM radio in it, which is really oh, cool. Nice. So let me get up here. I'll let you go ahead and feed yours in. Yeah, it's just so much easier to put these heater cables in first because uh, this particular, then I have to pull out the whole glove box if I don't. Yeah, you want a pad, Mike? Oh, we're good. Okay. Let me know if you get tired, Mike, and we can oh, I'm good. swing it up there. Any... Yeah, sure it's pretty card, isn't it? It is. I love this color. It's so amazing. Get so many positive comments on it, especially on Facebook. Everybody just loves it. They've never seen it. And I said, well, this is a one of one. You know, you just don't see this color. And everything, the top and the, oh, the just... deals on the hood, everything oh, sets yeah. it off and makes it look good. Yep, the air grabber, it's a Hemi. You know, you can't beat that. Cables went on fine. I have a little trouble with the bulkhead. Uh, sometimes it, it gives you some issues because the gas gets so thick. But other than that, it went right up. We had to kind of shim it a little bit to to get it to slide into the places, but yeah, it went perfect. Just getting the speedometer cable in there. Let me get it under there like that. Now this has got to go up on top of that. The whole thing's got to go yeah. this way, huh? Yeah, it's right there. It's in. Cool. Nice. I'll let you tighten with a ratchet. Look at that. Uh, the dash went fantastic. I uh, can't ask for anything better. That's two in a row that we, we really slam dunk, so that's that's always a plus. Very nice. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate yeah. it, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to send you a picture of it in the car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to shoot that. That's awesome. The 69's got the uh, Roadrunner on the dash holding the helmet, which is really cool. 1970 went on the door. 68 was on the dash, but it was black and white because they didn't have the Warner Brothers approval yet on the bird, you know? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'll have to double check that. I'll have to go out in the in the graveyard and make sure and, that I'm right. But I think it's 68 and 9 are on the dash, 70 went to the door, but the 68 was black and white on the dash, so. That's funny, huh? I'll have to double check that. That's what's nice about having our graveyard out there. Hey, do you want to take a walk out there and yeah, take a look at that and see? Yeah. So, I mean, really, being this was her baby, right? I was not allowed to touch it. 
<laughs> so she worked on it. That's great. Um, I was not allowed to touch anything. If there was a stuck bolt or nut, I could break it loose, and then I was told to get out of there. You were there for the muscle. <laughs> I was there for the muscle, and that was it. <laughs> that was it. I think that's terrific. <laughs> Basically parked because there was a sound in the engine she didn't like, and we wanted to take a look at it closer, and uh, it was a project she and I were going to work on together, um, but that didn't, didn't happen. Uh, Life got in the way, you know, kids, jobs, family, and so forth. I can just tell, generally, when I look at a car, if all the panels are the same color and it hasn't been painted, there's a good chance most of it's original paint. Yeah. That tells me the car lived a reasonably decent life. Yeah. That's the very first thing I look for. Then I look a little closer and I say, okay, how is the bottoms of the quarters? All E bodies and B bodies wrought out on the bottom. I'm looking at these right here and they're actually... They're good. Solid. Yeah. Okay. This is a great opportunity for Alyssa to come up and kind of see what some of the steps are when it comes to a, acquiring a new vehicle uh, for the shop to restore. Alyssa, okay. come around here and you'll notice that it's got the N42 ex chrome dual exhaust tips, but this one's off right now. Mm -hmm. So probably at some time it could have easily just fallen off, rattled off or something. But these are factory exhaust tips. N42 is the code on the fender tag. N41 minute had dual exhaust. And what's unusual, this is a California car, and a lot of California cars would delete this option. They didn't want it because it didn't meet the sound barrier for that for that area, and so they just put turndowns on it. This car actually made it through and was sold in California with the exhaust tips, which is really cool. Why well, restore the car now? Um, I think it was time. It's a promise I made to her before she passed, and um, it's time. Now this one has the V, I think, 5X, because they're black, but these are actually factory installed body side bumper guards, if you can imagine that. You could have, with the RT, gotten Stripe Delete, which I think would have been a V88 code. That would have given you no stripe at all, but it would have gave you the badges here, so that's probably what we've got. Or you could have had the V6 longitudinal stripe or the transverse Bumblebee stripe on it. But this one was Stripe Delete, but they went with the body bumpers. The Rally Dash, by the way, this Rally Dash that you see right here, this is standard on all RTs. Interesting side note for you here. Genie's car that you mentioned before was a 70 Dodge Challenger 340 mm -hmm. automatic. Mm -hmm. You could not get a 340 in a 70 Challenger RT. You could get it in a, just a Challenger, which is what she had, but it came with what they called the A66 performance package, which was an identical twin to a Challenger RT, just without the Char Challenger RT badges and the second digit of the VIN being an S, <laughs> because S represented that it was the RT line. In that car, it would have had a standard, I believe, being not an RT, that the Rally Dash was optional on it. Do you happen to remember if her car, by chance, well, you've got I it. I don't know. I do have the Dash. We still have the original Dash. I can't dash. wait to see if it's a Rally Dash or not, because so. I believe that that was an option on the non-RT cars. They're over here in the room, a uh, little storage room back here. Oh, great. Down here. Oh. oh, wow. Look at that. Dave and Mike head out to the graveyard to evaluate Dave's memory. I always kind of second guess myself when I start talking about stuff. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it was a 68 is in black and white on the dash, just like the 69. And then the 70 moved to the door. So here's our 68. And we know this one's right because it doesn't get any more original oh, than this, this car. Oh, this very original. I remember. This car is just this amazing. Is car we go to every time you want to. Oh, God, this thing's awesome. I love to have this car. Original 68 four speed Roadrunner. Let's take a look there. Yep, there it is, right on the dash. And it's black and white, and it looks like a duck. Because <laughs> they didn't have yeah, the... Yeah, Yeah, they didn't have the okay from Warner Brothers to use the image, so they had to, like, make up a fake-looking road runner. Right on. There you go. All right, so, yeah, that's cool. So there's it our 60... It looks like a duck. That's pretty funny. It's funny looking, huh? Yeah, and then the 69 we know is on the, on the dash. Yep, and here's our 1970. Yeah, so this one right here should be on the door. Yeah, and that one should be on, yep, see it's not on the dash and there it is on the door. And then this one's... Yep, and it's actually the yep, bird. got the bird, yep. So that's cool. Jeez, look like this car just burned to the ground, boy, and the door just shuts perfect. That's gonna be a cool one, Plum Crazy Purple. <laughs> 70 oh, Roadrunners awesome. to be just like uh, the one that we had in season one. So that's cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I was right, so I was kind of glad I was right. I, you kind of second-guess yourself when you start thinking about things because we work on so many different cars. 
but it's always nice to go out there and uh, get that verified, you know, information. So it's really cool. Yeah, well, good deal. Awesome. Well, now we know. You can't be going out to the graveyard and getting all the information you need. Hey, have a, you know, yeah. 70 cars there. Oh man, I don't know what I'd do with uh, without these things out here half the You'd time. You'd be digging Mark all the time. Yeah, the book. Yeah, the books are great, but by the time you spend in the books, you can walk out here in two yeah. minutes and, and find. Be done it. with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the dash went in really well, and after the dash now, all we got to do is put in the, the sound dinner carpet, uh, door panels, front and rear, of course, and uh, the seats. So, I mean, it's it's pretty a basic uh, interior, no, no real special items going in this one, so it should go pretty fast. With the dash installed, Dave can continue with the Hemi Roadrunner's interior. Meanwhile, Will grins and bears it for his new tattoo. Uh, everything's going good. I really can't see exactly but I trust her that it looks right. I have no reason not to. Are we having any issues? It's supposed to be pink, right? Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything's going as planned? Yeah, I think it's doing good. Got a little longer. Still got some blue and some other shading to do, but. She did say, I don't know what it meant. This was the best tattoo she's ever done. Um, I know she's done a lot, so I don't, I don't know what that means exactly for the other people, but this seems to be going perfectly well. I think it's going really good. I think it's adding a lot of color and a little more character. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> With Will's grumpy transformation nearly complete, Mark and Alyssa are on their way to discovering the remains of a wrecked 1970 Challenger. They're over here in the room, a uh, little storage room back here. Oh, great. Get on here. Oh. Oh, wow, look at that. And that's the dash that we were able to pull out. Rally dash. Wow. That's awesome. Holy cow, that's crazy. And the pile of tires she kept because when she got the car restored, she wanted to burn them. When the engine was in good shape, she wanted to- Oh, as in smoke them off the car. smoke them off the car. Holy Oh my instead goodness. Of, instead yeah. of doing the new tires. I think Mark uh, and Alyssa found Jeannie to be a, a special person that, that she was. I think they, they started getting a sense of who she was and what she liked and really her fondness for the cars and the joy that that brought her. This is a, a remarkable example of a relatively untouched car. By now, a lot of times I open the door on a garage, somebody say, hey, yeah, everything's there, but really there's nothing but a, a, an old wheel, a set of keys, and, and can you build that? No, I can't yeah. build that from that. But this car's complete. Uh, it's even got the hood that was one time missing on it. He's got extra parts if we need them. So uh, it's a not rusty car. It's a solid, good, solid, complete car. I think that the restoration will go relatively smooth compared to many of them that need a lot of sheet metal. Speaking of that, do you have any original paperwork? I have the original California title that, that she had in, when Beautiful. she bought it. Beautiful. Little little critter like that. Pink one, yeah. Pink, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah pink, pink slip. The pink slip. The pink slip. <laughs> It'll be a, a little weird seeing it go. Um, I've seen it in this garage now for, oh gosh, 27 years. It's gonna be hard to see it go. It's gonna be a, a different look, but um, it'll also be a different car when it comes back. You can just see the outpouring of love that he had for his wife, and that's really touching. Yeah, it's I, I mean, awesome. it's just, yeah. It's true. I'm leaving it's, here it's... with a really heavy heart. I mean, it's just really, really cool. Wow, what a what a real bit of a time capsule. A lot of this paint, by the way, is original. I can just tell by the sheen that's on it. Originally, it was a PPG, but back then it went by Ditzler, and it was a single stage enamel. I recognize the sheen, the depth, the hue. I know that color. Things can become mundane in anybody's business. Um, you know, cleaning apart, replating apart, building a Hemi out becomes, I mean, after a while, if you built enough of them, it does just become second nature to you. And I think that we can kind of lose sight of certain things. This is this is a great refresher for me to see, a, you know, just a, a really nice guy who lost his wife, who they were married forever, and he made a promise and he's keeping the promise. Was it in a parking lot when the hood got stolen off? It was or? in front of her house. Oh my God. In her driveway. So she just came out one morning and the hood? The hood was gone. Very, that's crazy. Very nice original 70 hood. Yeah, that's absolutely 70. How I can tell it's a 70. There's no part number that tells you that. But in 1970, there wasn't a crush zone in these hoods. There wasn't, they didn't crumple like the Federal Department of Transportation decided they wanted them to crumple in 71. So there's no indication of the bars that came in later. Little reliefs in this and this that allow the hood in 71 to crush easier. This one doesn't have it, means it's a true real life 70 model. But I use my common sense that number one, it's got orange paint on the block. All, all HP engines in 1970 and 71 were painted orange, actually in 69. 
So that means it's an HP engine and this car is an ENCODE 335 horsepower HP 383. So that's evidence of it. The PCV valve, this is the original tri-rib PCV valve that probably started life and it's a unique to 70 on up, was right there. This probably was unplugged from the original valve cover and put in to this new direct connection valve cover. Okay. So if I was a gambler, looking at the rest of the condition of the car, the clips, the things that look like they've never been off, that when they do come off of the car, the average butcher just whacks them. I'd say that's probably the original. You know, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of this process. I'm honored to be a part of what's going to be a tradition in his family for many, many years to come. And, you know, there's no real clever button to put on any of that. It just is what it is. This is real life. These cars that we take for granted oftentimes become the fabric of our lives. It sounds weird or hokey, but it's true. This vapor return line was an early emission that was standard in 71, but in 1970, it came with an N90 five code, which I actually called nitrous oxide, as, which I have no idea how they got <laughs> nitrous oxide out of that. So what does that lead to? Is that a- That goes back to, to the fuel tank? Yep, back. Eventually it goes through another canister, but then it dumps itself into the fuel tank. Okay. And it was taking the vapors that came off of the fuel that went into the engine and kind of recycling them back in there. Okay. Again, seeing that on a California car and then seeing the exhaust tips on it, that's a cool combination because you usually almost don't see those two together. Okay. This is very environmental friendly. The exhaust tips weren't environmental friendly. Uh, carburetor looks to be like the original one. Let me just check the number on it. 4734S sounds like the original number, but with a CS, that's January, February, March of 75. So it could be an over the counter replacement carburetor with the correct part number on it. I would have to investigate that, but I see the original Highland bolt that holds it in place. What I like is I'm looking under here and I'm seeing all original paint. I'm not seeing aprons that have been wadded up and hit and bashed and straightened back out or patches that have been put in it. It's a very clean original example of what one of these cars should look like when you pop the hood and it's never been changed. In fact, there are a lot of things on this that I would probably will document very carefully because they allow me on the cars that have been had all that happen to them to put them back the way they're supposed okay. to be. Well, we're here to put the top on the 69 Roadrunner Hemi Convertible, uh, this beautiful one-on-one -on -one car. We've been kind of just sitting around waiting on some parts, you know, uh, just uh, got to a point where you're kind of at a standstill and it happens in the restoration business. You get to a point and you might have uh, five or six extra parts. You can't put them on until you get another one. Uh, but in this case, we're just kind of waiting on the top. Uh, once Larry gets the top on this one, we can just put all the interior in. Yeah, you usually don't, uh, you know, foresee any problems uh, installing the top, but there's always that, that chance, you know. Uh, convertible tops, every car is different. Uh, they all basically go on the same way. But if you have a problem with uh, some of the screws stripping out, uh, there's, it's a kind of a unique system. That whole top tucks behind, you know, three separate pieces that like screw to the back of the car. Uh, I played with the top, got it working, you know, got all the hydraulics and everything works good. So hopefully uh, Larry, you know, all his parts will work out, all his parts will fit right, all the screws will go good and uh, he'll get it put in. With the Hemi Roadrunner's convertible top installed, Dave can begin work on the sound deadening material. Getting ready to put our sound deadener in our 69 Roadrunner convertible Hemi car. I kind of want to explain a little bit of difference about the, the new style sound deadener and the old style. Uh, this car in particular, the owner wants to go all OE on it. So he wants everything original equipment. Uh, and so he said he didn't want the new style sound deadener in it. He wanted to go with the OE style. Uh, so we called up and we got our kit of the OE style sound deadener and you can kind of see, uh, it's, it's basically like a roofing material and it comes pre-cut. Uh, this one here in particular uh, is the new style. You can get this pre-cut to fit this vehicle. It's gonna cost you substantially, you know, a little bit more money. This just kind of shows the difference. I mean, whenever you lay them down, they're pretty close to the same thickness. The other th nice thing about it is this one here, you have to glue down the OE style. And a lot of times you gotta kinda use a heat gun to kinda get it to form. This one right here, you can see you just peel the back of this off and it just sticks, it's already tacky. So you peel that off and just stick it right down and it's done. And this style here, you'll have to mold and actually glue uh, down to the floor. Kinda looks at who would, who would wanna put the new stuff in their car? Probably a guy with like a resto mod, you know, with a, a kind of a tricked out car that's not an actual numbers matching, you know, high end car would want to go with this, have a nice stereo, you know, have a nice ride, nice quiet ride. 
somebody that has a high-end car, you know, a numbers matching car like this here, this is gonna be the one he's gonna wanna go with because it doesn't hurt the value of the car at all. Uh, I got my original style OE sound deadener here. Of course, this is just gonna go on the floor. All the stuff on the doors will be plastic sheeting that we'll have to do later. But I got it all ready to go here. I'm just gonna lay it out. It's a nice warm day. So it'll lay out nice and flat, figure out where it all goes and start laying it in. Although modern sound insulation is more effective, collectors of original equipment vehicles will put up with the noise and inconvenience just to ensure their cars are exactly the way they were when they rolled off the assembly line. That's working good with the heat gun. I use the heat to kind of form it into place and then it helps me uh, to get the glue to set. So I'll spray the glue, uh, run the heat gun over it, get it to form right in there and then kind of release it, make sure it doesn't back off. But it seems to be uh, working really well. Uh, yeah, the OE style sound dinner only goes on the floor, uh, so it's really quick and easy to put in. So that's all laid down. I just got to put the carpet in now. Now that all the carpet's in, uh, all we got to do now is just knock out the interior. Just rear door panels, rear seat, front door panels, front seats. That's basically about it. We don't have to deal with that console. So uh, it's going to be really quick and easy on this one. While Dave continues the interior installation, Mark and Alyssa wrap up their road trip to check out Jeannie's 1970 Challenger RT. We are gonna bring the car back to life, make uh, her proud, looking down on us, make him very proud. I'm just really excited about this. It's a great opportunity, and to have it so close and nearby is, is pretty amazing. I've been very lucky throughout my whole life. I've been very fortunate, very blessed in so many ways, and this is just another one of those blessings. You learn from everything. Learn from, learn from the car, learn from him, learn from his stories. Learn from everybody that you can learn from, because good people have a lot to teach. Bad people don't always, but good people have a lot to teach. And so, you know, I think this is awesome that she could come up with me today. And we razz each other, and but at the end of the day, we're father and son. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I think this is just a great um, father and daughter experience that is outside of graveyard cars, but is in reality. Uh, the core of why I do what I do. I'm passionate about these and I cars. See that now. And you see why I'm I passionate. I do. It's it's exciting it when you can be here from the beginning and come to the person's house and meet them and see the car in their garage. It means so much more than picking up, you know, halfway through the story. Yep. I mean, I. So when I you really hear them on the phone right and you hear their voice tremble when they're telling the story, this is why. Yeah. This is Americana. This is what we do. This this is why we do what we do. So, it's awesome. This is a good trip. Well, thank you very much for letting us be part of the part of this story and, and thank you. I'm glad we were able to put a deal together. I'm very excited. I'm very glad you were able to come out and it's see this. It's just gonna be a wonderful uh, tribute to Jeannie and to, and to her passion for the car and, and your promise to her. And so, like I say, there's a lot more than just iron here. So this is, uh, you know, I get emotional too and I appreciate where you're, where you're at, man. Yeah, that's I a do. special car. You're a good man. Great, you're thank good you very man. much for coming Pleasure out. I appreciate you. it. All right. With a deal in place to restore a very special 1970 Challenger, Mark and Alyssa head home. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, let me see your tattoo. How'd it do? You mean how'd she do? Well, she, yeah, but I wanna see how it's doing. Oh, nice. Yeah, she did pretty good. Yeah, you need to clean it. it looks a little dirty. Okay, well, she hey, would the... beat you for that. Well, in a good way or bad way? Well, good way for me, bad oh, way bad for you. Oh, bad way for you? Yeah, she did a good job. Nice, I like that. Yeah, the blue popped really nice. Yeah, she did good. Nice. So every time you see this little grumpy bear on your arm, are you gonna think of Josh? Well, thanks for bringing that up, but uh, I never really thought of it that way, but yeah, I guess, uh, I probably should've thought that out. While Will contemplates the permanent reminder of Josh on his arm, Will contemplate what happened this week. Alyssa helped Mark apply decals to the Hemi Roadrunner convertible and learned some of the unique methods behind automotive finishing. So that's money right there. Meanwhile, Will painted the jams on the Superbird tribute car, then took off early for the tattoo shop to get some paint of his own. I wanted to get something a little bit nicer, something that you could look at and laugh at. The Roadrunner got its convertible top installed and Dave completed the installation of the Sound Deadener carpet and dash. The 69's got the uh, Roadrunner on the dash holding the helmet, which is really cool. Alyssa and Mark made a very special trip to Sayo to check out a Challenger RT that holds a lot of meaning for the Pasturo family that own it. The Challenger belonged to Jeannie, who passed away four years ago from breast cancer. Her husband, Patrice, promised that one day her favorite car would be restored. 
So now, weeks later, with the restoration scheduled, Mark heads back to pick up the car and to meet their daughters. Uh, you know, it took us a little while to get back up here. Uh, what we tried to do was align when his daughters, Patrice's daughters, could be here for the pickup of the car, and I, I'm really glad that we did. The life story of that car is, for me, it's been in the garage completely, watch the rust kind of grow on it, get a bucket of water, dip paper towels in it, clean it off. Um, a few years ago, Dad put it up on jacks, so it's like, that's its life. Or, We've never, never heard even the seen car the keys. Start. Yeah, Until never seen today. the keys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, close that, close the trunk. Close the trunk. Please close. Getting here okay. with the Black Widows. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you guys are gonna be you gonna help me push? Am I pushing? Okay, go ahead and push. All right, there's a cat. No. <laughs> oh, I feel dirty, it's like we're kicking it this out. This is great. Please don't roll away. Okay. I've. Oh, that's so weird. That is weird. Wow. How about I've never that? Seen it outside. That's beautiful. Not ah. bad. How perfect was that? That was the brake pedal, even. Nice. Really? Yeah, it had just enough <laughs> to. It still had a little scratch. A little something left in it, yeah. <laughs> I think that this, uh, you know, coming out to a person's home, taking a car out of a garage that has been parked longer than his daughters have been on the earth, and that's the truth, is, is very humbling. And it reminds me of what the passion was when I first started doing this. It was to be able to bring the cars back to life, but it wasn't for my own reasons and it wasn't for the money. Mom was prepared. There are napkins in here. Yes. Oh, yeah. Aww. <laughs> she always had napkins in her purse. <laughs> okay. Wow. This is That's nice. cool. But it's for the ability to be able to help people fulfill a dream, to relive great memories of a time, and, and maybe even give them something that they can create new memories with. It's the least she could do. Oh my gosh, this is so, wow. Wow. Right? I think that's terrific. You look good in it too. It does. I think our, we'll be able to relate a lot more to our mom, you know, if we can drive it or at least ride in it, because, you know, part of what makes a person a person is their experience. And, you know, we've got to do horses with her, we've got to go boating, you know, we got to play volleyball with her, but we never got to ride in the car with her. Yeah. And I think that'll mean a lot to us. And I remember my mom went to go buy another Challenger because she wanted one so badly. Mm -hmm. And we went on a test drive and we sat in the back seat behind her. The way she was so happy, she called it the throaty engine. So she's like, are you here girls? That's throaty. And she'd mm -hmm. roll down the windows and just like listen to it. So being in the position that she was in driving, I think would mean so much more. I'm thinking there's been a lot of time since the initial thought of, of working on the car and this day finally happening. Uh, it's something she and I wanted to do together and then couldn't, so it's nice to see it rolling literally onto the truck to, to get a new life. All right, there she goes. There a little red, and there goes your baby. Yep. Well, now well, it's that's weird. Kind I think of that's the last time we'll see it like that. It is the last time we'll see it like that. But look, I can't thank you enough for trusting me. That's a big, that's a big thing. I take that stuff seriously, you know? I know what it means to you. I appreciate that. It's going purple. Um, that was Jeannie's wish. Uh, she didn't like the blue. She wanted purple with black interior. Um, and, and I think we'll put the hood pins on since those came off her 340, that, that first car that she had. So I, I think that'll make a nice package. It'll look really nice. And that, I think that's what she wanted. And it's yeah. really about her. It's her car.